Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My cheating wife ruined our marriage and lost everything. Now, I'm rebuilding my life while karma takes its toll. I work nights, and she works a day shift. Her job is in a male-dominated field, and she seems to be with co-workers more frequently. There is female support staff, like office jobs, parts room, etc. We're both in our 40s and have been together since we were 17 years old. She only started a career in the last couple of years, so a workplace relationship wouldn't have presented itself in the past. Recently, she's been hanging out with her female co-workers after work many nights. She gets off work around 5 and isn't home until about 7 or 8. Once or twice, she didn't come home until the morning because she got drunk with them and slept it off there. I find that unusual because she's very responsible and doesn't usually get carried away in social situations. At that point, I wasn't highly concerned. Last night I wasn't scheduled to work, so I was in bed at a normal hour. I was awakened by her cell phone screen in bed at 3 a.m. I couldn't see if she was texting or browsing the net, and she wasn't being secretive with her screen, like angling it away, etc. So that's probably innocuous. Then she got up and started getting ready for work. Now, her shift starts at 8, and she wouldn't need to leave earlier than 7 if she wanted to grab a bite before going in. I asked her. I thought your shift doesn't start until 8. She acknowledged that but said she was going for a walk with her co-workers before work. She's a diesel mechanic, and they have uniforms at work. She seemed more cleaned up than expected for a walk or work. Not dolled up, but yeah, she was out of the house by about 4 a.m. and would likely be to her friends by 4.30. It was still very dark, rainy, and about 45 degrees out. Nobody owns a raincoat in Oz, so it would be poor conditions for a walk. Well, she drives a truck, and I drive a car. So I texted her around 5 to ask if I could get the truck so I could take some things to the dump. She didn't answer. Fifteen minutes later I called to ask. She said they were still out on their walk but to just come to her work when she gets there and get it then. If not for the rain I would have thought it a good opportunity to see if her hair was damp from a second shower. My brain works a bit differently than most, and I'm poor with social cues. Update 1. I confronted her by asking to see her phone. She tried to flip the script and demand my phone, so I gave it to her along with the password. I had nothing to hide hell. I don't even have time for meeting others. Anyway, I looked through her messages, and the one conversation I wanted to go through was conveniently missing. So I typed in the phone number, and her boyfriend or whoever's name popped up. I handed her the phone and said I wanted to see the texts with him. She acted incredulous, and I told her some of what I knew, that she texted him before leaving the house today, and when she got back, and that I knew she was with him when she was supposedly in Vegas, she tried to act like she didn't know why her phone carrier would have several pages of texting records between her and him. Since she didn't want to do anything other than storm off upstairs and retreat to the bed, I went up and told her I was packing a bag and leaving. What a police investigator taught me about doing the confrontation. The first thing he told me was, on small crimes less than homicide, the guilty rarely confess, and even if they do, they withhold a lot of information. So even if your partner admits to a one-night moment of weakness, they won't tell you about the six months of regular cheating. So, forget about getting a confession. By the time you're at this point you're ready to press charges, so to speak, and you're just trying to get additional information to use against them later. He also told me to start the confrontation with, I know more than you think I know, so start talking. The truth is the only thing that's gonna help you here. He also said that even though you're gonna search their phone, expect to find nothing. It's either extremely well hidden or already deleted, unless they're just stupid. The guilty will hide their evidence in anticipation of the day the confrontation comes. Remember you want them to believe you know without playing out how limited your information is. Rarely will you have proof of them in the act. When confronting them, ask for their phone. They will protest this and demand to see your phone. As expected, my wife did this, saying, I don't even know your password, you won't tell me, keep in mind, the guilty fear discovery. They'll be more concerned about what you're doing with their phone than going through yours. So, Observe their level of interest in finding damning info on you. My wife barely scrolled the text list and didn't even go into the pictures which many guys keep. She was looking at the phone in my hand as I was scrolling through innocuous texts. See, I don't know what you think I'm doing. Then I went to the phone icon, typed in his number, and pressed the text icon no messages. Big surprise, right? I went back to his contact and showed it to her, saying, where are his texts? She was like, we don't ever talk I called BS and told her that just last month alone, she had over 900 texts with him. Where are they? She acted incredulous, but she knew that number was probably pretty accurate. She admitted to deleting them a partial truth, right? Because they were talking about how she wanted a divorce but wasn't ready to tell me yet. Don't give too many details like how far back you suspect it. You can give a little to add credibility that you already know everything. Knowing how many texts helped me because it was a hard fact and irrefutable, and sent the message that I wasn't lying when I said I knew things. What I said above is how the guilty act. They will dodge, deflect. Even expect them to tell you where they went, but remember how much they tell you. If the details are vague and reaching, keep pressing for more information. Many lies are only minimally planned. They might be able to tell you about going to the bar with friends, 
but they won't have many details like who almost got punched or who won at darts. Spouses will tell you about their fun night with friends voluntarily, but the guilty spouse will want to know why you keep asking. As I said, they already know the confrontation is coming, so they're already planning their response. When confronting an innocent person, they might be annoyed at the request to see their phone due to privacy expectations but wouldn't resist. They'd be confused rather than deceptive. On the other hand, guilty people mix truth with lies. My wife claimed she was alone at a tattoo shop but lacked the details to back it up no sketches or photos, just vague explanations. She left home much earlier than necessary and came back much later. Although she may have gone to the tattoo shop, I suspect she spent time with her affair partner beforehand, and the lack of specific details raised my suspicions. An innocent person would have volunteered details easily, but my wife seemed evasive. Update 2. My wife is still with him, and things don't look hopeful for us. I've been making progress on my own issues, including anger management, which may have contributed to her distancing herself. Though she hasn't admitted to the affair, I'm beginning to accept my role in this situation and forgive her. She even suggested cohabiting for the kids, but I'm left wondering if that's a compromise out of fear or convenience. We had dinner with the kids recently, and though she seemed friendly she reminded herself not to get too close, making a subtle comment that reaffirmed her emotional distance. This morning she was gone, and I knew exactly where she was. I'd previously tracked her location, taking photos of her truck near her affair partner's house. Despite her attempts to cover her tracks texting me about errands and even sending a selfie at Costco it was clear she was lying. Her repeated deceptions have made it impossible for me to continue trusting her, but I'm conflicted. While I don't want to walk out on her and the kids again, I'm starting to accept that I need to move on. Living with her while knowing she's lying to protect herself or spare my feelings isn't healthy. Final update. I had a consultation with a lawyer and discussed the logistics of moving forward. My therapist advised against rash decisions, so I'm taking things slow, though my wife and I are still cohabiting for the kids. Despite her lies to the kids and me, I found some peace after a few nights of solid sleep. The lawyer revealed that I'm in a strong position regarding child support and the house. If I choose to sell, it will be sold. This gives me some leverage since my savings are at risk of being split equally. I've also considered continuing to pay for the house until the kids are grown in exchange for keeping more of my savings. Emotionally, I've struggled. I cracked under the pressure and even tried to reconcile with her, doing the pick-me dance. It was a low point, and I prayed for her to feel some love for me again. But that didn't work, and I realized that I was being pathetic. Fast forward to last Sunday, I told her I'd be out of the house so she could see the kids without me around. My wife ended the marriage so I no longer feel obligated to her emotionally. Meeting someone new, even if it's just a fleeting moment, has restored some hope and calmness in my life. I realized that my marriage was troubled for years and while I contemplated divorce, I never acted. Her affair was the final push. Maybe it was necessary because neither of us was happy, and neither of us would have ended it otherwise. Now, I'm reflecting on how things might have gone if I had been tested in the same way. The happy memories I had with my wife feel distant, and this situation feels like grieving the loss of someone terminally ill acceptance comes quickly, because you've anticipated the end for so long. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.